Will you take a look at that? Pretty pathetic, huh? Well, you'll never believe this, but that llama you're looking at was once a human being. And not just any human being. That guy was an emperor. A rich, powerful ball of charisma. Oh yeah, this is his story. Well, actually, my story. That's right, I'm that llama. The name is Cusco, Emperor Cusco. I was the world's nicest guy and they ruined my life for no reason. Oh, is that hard to believe? Look, I tell you what, you go back a ways, you know, before I was a llama and this will all make sense. Emperor's New Groove. You're listening to Writing Roots, brought to you by Aspen House Publishing. Welcome to Writing Roots. I'm Lee Hull. And I'm Lee Esses. We originally had a far more stuffy quote picked out for this particular one, but you can't give up the opportunity to quote Emperor's New Groove whenever possible. (laughs) Especially not when it is a perfect representation of our topic today, which is telling a story within a story. So in the case of Emperor's New Groove, the first half of the movie leads up to the opening scene. He's going back and narrating and going, and then this happened, and then this happened. So the first half of the story is a story being told by the second half of the story character. So it is that story within a story. This is a fun structure to play with, and it is very common. Because you can have it on a full-scale thing where you have that narrator who is telling the story about how they got to the third act or the middle of the book or whatever. Or you can simply have it be a play that happens within the story. Shakespeare was especially fond of this structure of putting some kind of play within a play. So let's get into what a story within a story is. The biggest advantage to something like this is you're adding layers to something that seems obvious at first. You have that mom telling the hero about the mentor character, where you see the mentor character and his gruff nature in a slightly softer light because you know about his brother. This little story within the big story gives context to everything that's going on. If it doesn't, it doesn't belong in your book make it a one-shot side thing. It needs to change how we view everything or else it doesn't count. It can also often, along those same lines, be used for character development, like we see in Emperor's New Groove, where we see the story within the story is how kind of terrible he was, that second half, is him realizing what needs to change. So... The very big, obvious red flag in that opening sequence is, I was the world's nicest guy and they ruined my life for no reason. We know automatically something is going to change where that perspective changes. He matures out of that mentality. Of course, with a lot of the examples that we were coming through, we were noticing that this is a framing device. And in most film, you'll see the framing device used as a voiceover. And it's a person looking back on that development. We spoke a couple episodes ago about It's a Wonderful Life, where he gets taken on this side journey of what could have been. That is another framing device. The wonderful thing about this structure is it really can be used in any genre. It can lend itself really well to comedy, like Emperor's New Groove, but it also lends itself really well to, like, heist movies or fantasy or crime. Name it, it is a very flexible structure. Because it serves a lot of purposes. So when you're approaching the story within a story and saying, I want to use this in my book, understand its purpose before putting it in there. Or at least understand that it has a purpose if you're a pantser. So let's get into that very long list of examples. The first one that can come to mind is Holes, where you have the main story of Stanley Yelnats. And within that story, 
There's that inner story about Kiss and Kate Barlow. And in the end, those two stories come together in the solution. We find out what these people did way back when have actually developed in a way to help Stanley Yelnets get out of his predicament. In that case, it's also a fairly decent parallel structure because you have two different stories kind of going on at once that meet up at the end. A really good example of the framing structure is the 1001 Nights, where the main character, Scheherazade, is telling a story for 1001 Nights to keep him from killing her. So that's the framing structure, and then the inner stories, the stories within the stories, are the tales that she's telling in order to survive. In a similar type Canterbury Tales, all of these people are going on a pilgrimage, and it's this wide collection of characters, and they're each telling a story mostly just to kill time on their road trip. A more unique take on this is that heist movie idea where you have, say, in Ocean's Eleven, where they're sitting there and they're explaining the plan. And as they're explaining the plan, you're seeing how it should be going. So the interesting part about using this story within a story is you have to make sure the plan doesn't go according to plan. Another one of my personal favorite examples of this is The Princess Bride where your main story is about a kid homesick and, you know, he realizes kissing books really aren't all that bad. I'm kind of with the immature version of the kid on that one. (laughs) And then the inside story is the story of the Princess Bride and Buttercup and Wesley and their adventures of true love. Frankenstein and I want to say Dracula did a little bit of framing your story with like newspaper clippings or in Frankenstein it was the journal he's telling the story to the sailors as he's dying and in Dracula it is letters back and forth so that's the interesting thing about the structure is it can be the whole story or it can just be little pieces of the story that are your story within a story it's an incredibly versatile useful tool for a lot of things But there are some things that you don't want to use it for. Mostly, even if your main character is killing time in order to not be murdered, you, the author, should not be just killing time with your story within a story. There needs to be some element of character development along with it, or a challenge that they have to overcome, something that goes there. The other thing, a story within a story is not technically a subplot. A story within a story are two separate timelines, more often than not. We're talking around a campfire, and I tell a story of a werewolf, and then it turns out the werewolf does exist, and it kills us all. That's a story within a story. A subplot would be something like, you're eating all the marshmallows, and I didn't get to toast any of the ones with the chocolate inside, so I'm a little bitter, so I'm naming my murdered character after you. That's a subplot. This structure is also not simply flashbacks. You're not telling the character's life history as your story within a story. It's not the same as the amnesia episode or the recursion episode. These are three completely different structures. Something to also keep in mind is if your story within a story is a plan, your story is about the future, make sure when the plan is actually executed, it's different. It's not exactly the story they told initially. Otherwise, it's redundant, it's boring, you're wasting everyone's time. If you explain the plan before it's executed, it has to go wrong. If it's supposed to go right, you don't explain it. The other thing with this is these stories can be presented by side characters. They don't have to be the main character telling the story. And it can also be a side character presenting this idea about a main character or a mentor. But again, it's not backstory. It's different. So if all of your characters are at the main character's funeral, then having a side character tell a story within the story about the main character helps 
the plot move forward. If you do think that a story within a story is useful, decide ahead of time what percentage of the story is being used for this story within a story. You can have 90% of the story be the inner story, like Princess Bride, or you can have just one scene be the inner story, more like Shakespeare. Knowing what you're doing with it and knowing how to use it and planning how much you're going to use with it is helpful in making sure you stay on track. The framing use, that idea of the outer story being the framing device, is a lot easier to do if the inner story is going to be told throughout the whole thing. So you have the Star Trek episode that opens up Captain's Log, Stardate, blah, blah, blah. It's someone in the future telling what's happening now. That's your framing device. We know he survives because he's creating the Captain's Log after the event. This is one of those structures that I really encourage you to try out, to test. It's just as easy for plotters as it is for pantsers. Are they going to be telling a story? Are they going to be reading a book? Are they going to be acting out a play in one of the scenes? You can play with this in any genre that you're writing in. You can have a story within a story. Much like if your life as the author was made into a movie, your book is relevant to your life which means that you would want to make sure that you were writing selfishly. If you have a question or comment for our hosts or a topic you'd like us to cover, send us an email at writingroots at aspenhousepublishing.com or find us on Facebook by searching for Aspen House Publishing. 